What's up everyone, my name is RJ and I'm a content creator from Vancouver, Canada. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you my complete travel guide to Myanmar. Majestic temples, friendly smiling faces, authentic local villages, untouched landscape, Myanmar has a ton of reasons why you need to visit. Though it just opened its doors to tourism, the country is playing catch up with its neighboring countries like China, Thailand, and Laos. Myanmar is and will be an appealing country to visit for the many years to come. Before we jump into the guide, let's quickly touch up on safety. There are conflicts happening within the country that makes a lot of people have a second thought about visiting. In my opinion, whatever is happening in the country is not related to tourism. And another thing, the places you'll be visiting are tourist attraction sites and they are safe. As with anything, do your research and have a look at the official Myanmar tourism site so that you're well informed before traveling to the country. Visa on arrival is not available for many foreigners. Only those who are from the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations are able to get a visa on arrival. If you're not from any of these countries, an e-visa would be your best option. A tourist visa can be attained through an online application. It will set you back 50 US dollars or roughly about 70 Canadian dollars, which will take one to three business days to get approved. Once you've been approved, your visa is valid for the next 90 days from the date it has been issued. Also, your passport needs to be valid for at least six months from the day you enter the country. Getting around Myanmar is simple. Depending on where you are, here are your options. Bagan is known for the e-bikes. They're like scooters, but not as noisy and more eco-friendly. They're really, really fun to ride. Scooters are also available. If you wanted to get a workout in, you could also rent a bicycle. In the bigger, main cities like Yangon, you have the option of using the Grab app. It's like the Uber in the country. It's convenient and cheap, especially if you're sharing the ride with people. These are your options when getting around within the city. To get from one city to the next, there are many bus companies that operate in the main tourist destinations. These can be typically booked a day before you leave the city. The currency used in the country is called the chat. ATMs are everywhere, especially in the main cities like Bagan and Yangon. Most of the foreign debit or credit cards are also accepted by the bigger or well-established businesses. Now here's what you can do in Myanmar. Let's kick it off in Yangon. There's a cool, super slow train that tops up at 30 kilometers per hour. The train ride is unique in the sense that you get to see the countryside and see how the locals live on this end of Yangon. The trip takes about 3 hours to complete but it's such an amazing experience. The next thing you want to do is see one of the most iconic temples in the country, the Shwedagon Pagoda. This golden stupa is 326 feet tall, believed to be the most sacred Buddhist pagoda in Myanmar. Many come here to pray and it's just so serene being here. The sights, the sounds, it feels like you're in a different world. You'd want to come here first thing in the morning for sunrise and then come later in the evening for the sunset. If you only have to choose one, I would highly suggest visiting in the morning. Try to avoid coming here during the midday as it gets really hot. The next city you want to visit is Pa'an, which is just 67 hours away from Yangon. The place is just so raw, it's so authentic, the landscape here has yet to be explored by the many. It's just plain beautiful. You need to rent a scooter to explore the city. There are many holy caves here, but here here are some of my recommendations. First is the Sadang Cave. This cave is an adventure in itself as you make your way inside and exit to the other. You will see a lot of statues, fancy lights, and bats inside the cave. Next up is Kogun Cave. You will find thousands of tiny clay Buddhas and carvings plastered everywhere. The details on the carvings are very impressive. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. The next cave is Yatae Payan Cave. You'll make your way through the entrance, passing the beautiful Buddha statues and out to an open field that is worth soaking in. 
at this point you're probably all caved out. The last cave I suggest you visit is the Lino Cave, also known as the Bat Cave. I didn't enter the cave though I did make it at this viewpoint and it was amazing. I caught the sunset there and watched the bats get out of the cave right after. And by the way, you can do all of these caves in one day. After your cave day, you're gonna want to do some more caves. No, I'm kidding. You're probably all done with the caves at this point. The Kayao Kala Pagoda A very picturesque pagoda situated on a lake with a mountain backdrop. A very peaceful place to sit back, relax, soak in the scenery, and enjoy the cool breeze. So the next thing you want to do is to hike up Zuegabin Mountain. This stands at 722 meters high and you want to get a head start first thing in the morning because if you start closer to midday, it would be extremely hot to do this hike as there's barely any shade when going up. The mountain is just one big stair master. Prepare for leg day. Depending on your fitness level, this hike can take up anywhere between one and a half to two hours to complete. It's a great workout nonetheless. There's a stupa right at the top and you can also enjoy the breathtaking views in several viewpoints. After exploring Pa'an, you can cool down along the coast to check out one of the favorite beaches by the many in the country, Mwesaung Beach. Here you can do a whole lot of nothing, crash a couple of resorts, and catch the sunset here in front of the two pagodas on rocks. A very picturesque spot, especially when the sun is going down. Now that you've cooled down, you want to go back into exploring. The trek from Inlay Lake to Kalao is famous though this route can be done backwards, which is what I did. Since Inlay Lake is a very famous attraction, I wanted to do this hike with Inlay Lake as the last stop so that it was somewhat a reward for completing the hike. There are several options when doing the hike. I ended up choosing the 3 days, 2 nights. You can do it in a much shorter time. I decided to pick the 3 day hike to get the full experience. The trail is mostly flat. The trek is a total of about 68 kilometers and you're doing 23 kilometers more or less per day. It's a cool experience which takes you through several villages. You will be having food in a local's home as well as sleeping in them. It's just such a cool experience to interact with the locals who live here and to just experience their day-to-day -day lives. The Burmans are one of the most humble and the most welcoming people in the world. This trek will prove just that. Once you've completed your trek, you can now enjoy Inlay Lake, one of the largest lakes in Myanmar. Stop at several local businesses on the lake. You can also grab a bike and explore here. After exploring, you need to check out Bagan, the city of pagodas. This place at one point had 10,000 pagodas. Now there's only about 2,200 left. It's still quite a lot for one city. There are many temples that have been locked up to prevent wear and tear of the temples. You need to find a good spot to see the epic sunrise and sunset here. It's honestly going to go down as one of the most majestic moments you'll have in the country. Next thing you want to see is Mandalay Hill, a famous spot to watch the sun go down for both the foreigners and locals. The viewpoint overlooks the city of Mandalay. There's also a shiny golden pagoda at the top built by King Anaurata in the 414 Myanmar era. This is Lubain Bridge. This stretches out to 1.2 kilometers across the Taman Lake. Other notable places to visit are Emrapu, Mount Popa, Napoli Beach, Inya Lake, and Gotek Vayada. Myanmar is drastically changing year after year. In fact, a lot has changed from a decade ago. You want to see this country before any more changes occur. A beautiful country with welcoming locals and many spots waiting to be explored. I hope this video gave you a better sense in terms of what to do and how to get around Myanmar. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below and I'll catch you guys on the next one.